Okay, in this video we're going to factor polynomials and specifically we're going to factor polynomials that have a GCF. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. We're going to start with this trinomial here in this example and what we need to notice and what we need to get in the habit of looking for every time is seeing if there's a GCF or a, a common factor or just any common factor between the three terms. And I can see that in this trinomial they all have a 2 in common. So before I can start factoring with the box method, I need to make sure I factor out that GCF. So in other words, it's kind of like I undistributed. I identified they all have a 2 in common, so it's like I almost undistributed that 2. I factored it out to the front of my trinomial. So now I have that 2. That's one of the factors. And then I'm just trying to factor this. So I'm almost going to factor 2x squared minus x minus 1 like it's its own problem. So that's really all that's different about this video is that we have to identify that GCF first and factor it out because if you don't your box method won't get you a good answer. So let's take it from here. I'm going to draw my box. My first term goes up here. My constant goes down there. And I'm looking for two terms here that when I multiply them, they give me a negative 2x squared. And I get that because I multiply that last term times that first term, and it gives me negative 2x squared. And then those same two numbers that multiply to give me that, they need to add to give me this middle term of negative 1x. Hopefully you've had some practice with this. I know that um, they multiply to get a negative, so I've got one positive and one negative. So the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. And I know that if they add to make a negative one, that this must be my negative. So I place those in my box, doesn't matter which one goes where, and then I factor out my GCF. And I end up with the factors of 2x plus 1 times x minus 1, and then I can't forget about this 2 that I factored out before we started. So here's my factors of this polynomial. So all we're really adding, I want to re-emphasize this, is that I have to look at my terms before we start and determine if there's a common factor. Because if there is, I factor it out and then factor the trinomial that's left, almost pretending that that factor isn't there. And then once I'm done, I just bring that factor back. So there's our first example. Here's the second example. And so, as always, I'm going to suggest that maybe you pause the video and try to do this one on your own. And then once you've tried it on your own, hit play and see if you get it right. So I'm looking for the GCF here. And so I can see that they all have an X in common. So it's okay for an X to be part of my GCF. So I factor that out. And then if I look at the three terms, I also am trying to find the GCF between 6, 21, and 15. Um, Looks like 6 won't be it, because 6 doesn't go into those two. Um, factors of 6, I think 2 and 3, I think 3 is probably going to be our GCF, because 6 is a factor, of, or because 3 is a factor of 21 and 15. So this 3x is our GCF that we factored out to the front. What's left in my parentheses is I think, okay, 3x times what gives me 6x cubed? 3x times what gives me negative 21x squared? And 3x times what gives me 15x? And so this trinomial left in parentheses is what we're actually trying to factor. I'm going to ignore the 3x for a while until the end. I'm going to make sure and attach that to my answer. But I'm factoring this trinomial. So I go back to my box. And I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply those two numbers, they give me a... 10x squared. And I got that 10x squared by multiplying 5 and 2x squared. And then I want these same two numbers that multiply to give me this, I want them to add to give me a negative 7x. So I think about my factors of 10. Uh, 10 and 1, there's no way to combine those to get negative 7. So I think 5 and 2, and I think, oh, I could do negative 5x and negative 2x. Because I know those would multiply to give me a positive 10x squared, but they would add to give me the negative 7x I want. So I'm putting those in my box. Doesn't matter which one goes in which of these two boxes. And then I start to factor out my GCF. Let's see, I've got a 
um, that looks like a negative 1, x, 2x, and negative 5. And once again, I remind you, if that box closest to its negative, I'm going to factor out a negative. So I'm left with 2x minus 5 times x minus 1, and then I can't forget about that original 3x that I factored out. So there are your factors. So to recap, really, I didn't walk through the why of every step in this video because I'm already assuming you know how to factor with the box method. What we need to remember, once you know the basics of the box method, is that we need to get in the habit of trying to identify if there's a GCF before you start. And you got to factor that out before you do the box.